Okay, so in the first one we have a thousand kilogram car. That's mass one, traveling at 13 meters per second, velocity one to the right. Dur, 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 dur. Collides with a 2100 kilogram truck. So that's eh, the masses. Mass two we have um, initially traveling at six meters per second to the right. So I have both masses, both velocities. Um, so right from there, I can get all of this before momentum stuff. Momentum equals mass times velocity. Cool. So the collision lasts for 0 0.7 seconds. That's a time during which the average impact force is 9,570 newtons. So that is a force. So if I want with that, I can get the impulse. So the impulse, J, is force times time. Great. So I can get that part of it. Just stuck that right over here. So now if I have the impulse, that's also equal to the change in momentum. The impulse causes the change in momentum, right? So it's going to change by that much. So if I want to find the momentum after the collision, well, the car is the one doing the crashing, right? So it's going to end up slowing down. So you'd have whatever that car's momentum beforehand, subtracting the impulse, subtract that change in momentum. And you have the truck, which is getting hit. So you'd have that momentum for the truck plus the impulse, plus that change in momentum. So it's basically a transfer of momentum from one to the other. Total stays the same. So that'll let you get new momentum for the car, new momentum for the truck. What was the car's final speed and direction? Well, you're back to P equals MV. Now you know a new momentum afterwards. You know the mass. Solve for the velocity. Same thing for the truck. 